The Prime is one of these defining motherboards to review. It is Asus um, entry level for any Z powered motherboard. A and the P variant is the entry level of the entry level. But in a tech world which is rapidly shifting towards PCIe 4.0 compliancy and higher core count, even the entry level of entry levels needs to show uh, serious specifications, even expensive ones. Today, we are reviewing the Prime Z490P from Asus, the cheapest of the affordables with one hell of a pretension, be good and cheap. It's a bit like being Belgium, it's, it's kind of a cheaper uh, entry-level version of French. The best engineered boards, in my opinion, are usually the most affordable one because engineers really have to try to balance uh, efficiency, power, durability with cost. And that really entails the absolute control of not only the manufacturing process, but the components uh, which will be present on the board. It's also about repute. The Prime P is often Asus bestseller motherboard. And so if they get it wrong here, it's really gonna show poorly on the entire series and the entire motherboard uh, season, sort of speak. Now, starting with the obvious, our Prime Z490P comes with a six layer ATX PCB, two more layers than its predecessor, giving this board a better signal isolation and the ability of safely handling PCIe 4.0 bandwidth level, as well as a better VRM heat dissipation. Big manufacturing improvements when compared to its predecessors, the Prime Z390P, and something which will both improve its uh, durability and uh, stability. Uh, so yeah, that is the very first big kudos to Asus for this. It is powered by the brand new LGA1200 socket, which can support 10th and 11th generation of Intel Core CPU. Note that the PCIe 4.0 abilities of our boards will only be unlocked by the 11th generation of Intel Core CPU, effectively doubling its available bandwidth. Now, VRM-wise, well, we do have 10 plus 1 50 amps power stages organized in a 5 plus 1 phases configuration, which is more than enough to run any of the 10th generation of Intel Core CPU and even a little bit of headroom uh, to modestly overclock it. Uh, for its 11th generation, we'll wait and see, but I think it'll be probably about uh, the same conclusion. Cooling-wise, we do have two much higher and larger heatsinks than on its predecessors, which do quite a good job at dissipating 80 to 120 watts without crossing the 80 Celsius barrier, which is a very good sign and away from any potential thermosothaling issues. They're more throttling. And here, there is a really nice evolution. Something was extremely simple, but extremely efficient. And I love when Asus or anyone else makes this kind of move. Uh, our heat sinks have a double contact design, which makes a thermo padded contact on both power stages and chokes. I mean, and, and I don't understand why nobody thought about this before, because it's so simple and affordable um, and with such a definite and immediate effect on the heat efficiency of our VRM, it's, I think it it's really is a genius move. Whoever in Ace thought of this should get a promotion, no doubt. RAM-wise, our board can support up to 128GB of DDR4RAM in a dual-channel configuration, overclockable up to an unprecedented 4.8GHz, and that is truly unprecedented, especially uh, when you compare it with both of its predecessors, the Z390 and X570 powered uh, versions. And that's a definite uh, kudos. Uh, to Asus for this, because with this kind of speeds, you're gonna experience a definite and immediate performance increase uh, on your day-to-day -day computing. And frankly talking, it's luxury, pure luxury all around. Staying in the memory, this board can support up to two M.2 solid state drives. Since our Z490 chipset is obtained ready, both of our drives will be able to swap data up to 32 gigabit per second. But when coupled with 11th generation core CPU and the right kind of PCIe 4.0 sticks, they will be able to reach a Gargam 2 esque 64 gigabit per second. In both cases, M.2 solid state drives tend to heat up quite a bit. And since we do not have any thermo padded heat sinks, I would strongly suggest that you get ones who come pre-mounted with one and keep your booting sticks away from the video card to avoid any obvious thermo bleeding. Now, a little word on our chipset. The Z490 chipset is in all and for all a Z390 chipset with an upgraded Wi-Fi model, which explains how it can 
run on a cool 6 watt and the absence of an active cooling solution as seen on the X570 series. Staying in the storage section, our board can support up to 4 3.0 SATA plugs, swapping data up to the usual bottlenecking, disappointing 6 gigabit per second, which the entire industry seems to be okay with. Italians have invented the idea that they invented pasta and we cannot invent any new uh, data storage standard. Go figure. Export-wise, we have six PCIe slots, four bachelors, because as usual, they are single speed and single slots, so I like to call them bachelors, and two 16 slots with different speeds. Only the first one can deliver up to 16 lane speeds, making it the unique suitable candidate for optimal GPU performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. The second PCIe can run up to only four lane speed, not the greatest for running GPUs, but since this is not an SLI compliant motherboard, I have zero regret here. Back IO wise, well, we do have a very basic non-padded back plate, and I am not sure how much it would have cost to put two little screws and, and fix it to the motherboard. Uh, but obviously Asus didn't do it and I regret because that does save us quite a bit of time and mistakes. So I'd like maybe to see that introduced on the next iteration of this board. So starting from the left, we got a mouse keyboard PS2 connector, which to be fair, I could do without because this is not an overclocker. So you're not going to do any reckless voltage situation here. It's not going to fail because of that. You won't have the absolute need to have a mechanical access to your computer. So I would have preferred to see it replaced with, I don't know, a couple of you know, USB second generation plugs or something like that. Talking of which, we also have two uh, second generation USB plugs, two five gigabit USB plugs, two 10 gigabit USB plugs without a type C, which I find a little bit uh, disappointing because the standard is gonna be more and more used. And so yeah, definitely want to see it on the next iteration of the board. A couple of display outputs for our integrated graphics, our surge protected one gigabit LAN, no Wi-Fi, but you can upgrade your board connectivity through this connector right here. And finally, our ALC 887 eight channel audio codec, which is, I mean, it is okay, but not great. It's not an ALC 1220. We have less capacitors, so the sound quality will be noticeably uh, lower. The bass won't be as pure. And most uh, importantly, even though uh, the left and right audio channel have been traced on, on different and dedicated PCB layers, uh, which improves the isolation. You can still make out some background parasite, which can be problematic when recording from a non-grounded house such as mine. But to be fair, this is not something I was looking for, uh, particularly on such a budget motherboard or any budget motherboard. If you are really interested to have super duper high quality sound, you can always go for an external uh, uh, sound card, which is quite affordable and will fix all of the issues above. Now, front panel connector wise, we have two second generation USB front panel connectors for transfer and monitoring, two 3.2 first generation five gigabit front panel connectors, which is Kind of luxurious, I gotta say. Uh, our Thunderbolt connector, which can transfer data up to 40 gigabit per second. Very happy to see it here. And uh, as I mentioned before, no front panel connector type C, which usually I would forgive if it had been uh, present on the back IO. Uh, so yeah, definitely you, you have to make a choice in life. Uh, I'd rather to see it on the back IO, but having none of both something I want Asus to, to fix on the next iteration of this board. Cooling-wise, the Plus Z490P manages to have a very respectable five PWM fans, one of which will support an all-in-one or dedicated water pump. And again, I did not expect anything more from a first-time builder. We have more fan connectors than needed to have a proper or even a very good airflow in your build. The only critic I have is the fact that we do not have hybrid connectors, which would allow uh, multiple functions on the same connector, either a PWM fan, a water pump, or even a flow sensor connector. Troubleshooting wise, well, it's gonna go very quick because we get nothing, not even an easy debugger, which I also regret because when you're talking about higher core count or potential PCIe 4.0 support with higher bandwidth level, you are really running the risk of having issues or we have more chances to have boot fails or any kind of other issues on your motherboard. So having even the very basic easy debugger to get you or guide you through the troubleshooting of a failed boot is really important and something I absolutely want to see on every Z 
powered motherboard from now on. And finally, talking about lifesaver space traveling features, we have a bunch of RGB options on our Prime Z490. P, starting with a rather bright RGB strip nested in the back of our PCB, three RGB connectors, one of which is addressable. Fun fact, if you want to say RGB in French, it's RGB. RGB. In conclusion, the Prime Z490P will cost you about 160 US dollars before taxes. And I'll start by the minuses. I do regret, obviously, the absence of Type-C connectors, the fact that the IO backplate is not integrated, uh, and most importantly, the absence of easy debuggers and hybrid fan connectors. But all of these features are non-essentials, I want to say. They're more an adjustment, something that I would like to see, but it really does not affect the, the, the core performance of this motherboard. And I'll say this, there are four major improvements on the Prime Z490P compared to its predecessor. And I'll start with the fact that we have a better manufacturing process, we have six PCB layers, which will really benefit PCIe 4.0 abilities and the VRM efficiency, a more than adequate VRM to optimally run and overclock 10th and 11th generation of processors, a much faster and unprecedented RAM clock going all the way up to 4.8 gigahertz. And I'll even mention uh, a small yet brilliant improvement, the double contact VRM heatsinks, which I am absolutely in love with. The only reserve I would have here is if you are already operating a Z399 generation uh, a processor at home, you don't have enough incentive uh, to finance an old motherboard plus processor upgrade. I would wait another year and the release of the in Intel 11th generation of processors so that you can take advantage of everything. But if this is not your case and are on the market for the best possible performances for the least amount of money, an easy yet a solid first time builder, the Prime Z490P is really one of the best I have seen thus far. So yes, in short, the competition really needs to worry about this one. Yes, it does.